welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids at 147. And I'm going to kit up another one of my mini projects today. So this one is 15 by 20 um, and it is of a little, a little dull. So I'm actually going to do the canvas first, just for a little change, because why not? Um, now when I pull that top cover off, I can see that I have got a couple of little bits where the glue's lifted, but there is nothing wrong with the canvas on the back. So I know that the canvas itself is going to be fine. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to use my knife and I'm just going to score down where it is just to allow the air to get out and I'm going to go across ways as well just so that I know the air has got plenty of different ways of escaping and then I did see another one where was the other one there it is they're very small um, and I can only see them on a certain light so I'm just going to go through both of those and then what I do like to use is I have these sort of straightener tips on the end of some of my pens and I like to use those to sort of squeeze out any. So I normally try and go sort of in the direction that the bubble is but because I've scored it that has now got rid of both of those bubbles completely. So that means that canvas will be good to work on. Um, and I have taken off the full top cover because I am going to use these. I am liking these. Now, I can't remember from doing the last one if it worked out that I could know it didn't. Now, how did I do it? I can't quite remember how I lined them up. So maybe I'll just, I think I did it like that. How many can I get going upwards? Maybe I do need to, oh no. Okay, so we're all right on three that way by going over a little bit. So those two sections will be a bit smaller. Now with the two, I think I have to go closer to the end of the painting. There, so I need to go closer to the painting. So it does have a little lip of double-sided tape so I'm just going to move that one up to cover that as well sometimes I do cut this off sometimes I cover it with washi tape on this painting it is only a very small amount it is only a small painting which means I'm not going to be working on it for long um, so it's and I don't have pets so it's not likely to pick up a load of fluff and um, so I'm more than likely just going to leave leave it on that one so that's my canvas prepped um, all potential little bubbles in the canvas dealt with and now it's time to get to the diamonds so let me get them all out the bag and I'm going to keep that bag sort of handy to throw them in I do more often than not keep my kits in these bags um, but I did have most of them in use and I knew I was kitting up these small ones quite quickly as I completed them. So I kept them in the bag they came in. But having a look through, so I've got 17 colours in this one and the highest number of packets I have is four. Now I know that these containers will fit four packets in and um, they won't fit a fifth but they will fit four which means I'm only going to need one container per colour. So I'm going to grab my trimmer. So there are a couple of things that I want to cut off this sheet. So firstly, I do want to cut the image off. You have to bear with my trimmer blade. It has recently been changed, but it obviously is not the best. So I want to cut off the picture. So I'm going to do half of it with scissors, the small edge with scissors, because this trimmer is shocking at the moment. But I did want a straight edge. So I'm going to keep that because then I know what diamonds I have kitted up in this is for this, because I do have a couple of them on the go. And the next thing I want is I want the symbols and the DMC numbers. So I'm going to cut 
down for the DMC numbers as close as I can to the edge of the number that's four digits long and still being able to see it. And then I don't need anything else with that paper now. I've already done my checklist to confirm that I have all the colours. That was done when the kit arrived. And I've already checked the maximum amount of packets so that I know for my storage, so I don't need the rest. And then I'm going to cut as close as I can, within reason, to the symbol. So that I've got the symbols and the DMC numbers. I need the symbols for when I'm working on the painting. I need the DMC numbers for kitting up and for kitting down. So I need it for both of those. And then I'm going to chop off the part at the top and at the bottom. So all I have now is the symbols and the numbers. I don't need to know which number order they were in, i.e. 1 to 17, because this um, manufacturer puts the DMC numbers on the packets. So that's why I need the DMC number for kitting up. And then because I store my spares according to DMC number, I need them for kitting down as well. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make these into a sticker. I'm using a Xyron sticker maker that I was gifted by a lovely subscriber and has been an absolute dream to me. Um, push the labels through and then rip it off and what happens is all the sticky that is on this back white sheet either goes onto this clear front sheet that I'm about to peel off or it goes onto the back of my piece of paper. So they're on the back of the piece of paper and anything that was over the sides is on this clear sheet. So that gets a bit sticky. Um, and this has now turned all my labels into stickers, which I really like when I can view a kit and it all be a sticker. So it does mean that my inventory sheet you know, is used slash destroyed. Some people do photocopy theirs first. If you don't get an inventory sheet, then some people will photocopy the key on the canvas. Quite often, if I don't get an inventory sheet, then I just write stickers out. But I much prefer seeing the symbols in their true form. So rather than me having just A, B, C, I can see that A has a white background. I can see that B has a beige background. I can see that C has a green one. I like the fact that those colours come through. So I'm going to use the 28 storage container. Now I'm not going to need all of it, but I am going to pop my image in underneath so that when I turn this over I know what painting it's for and of course that will work fine when all these pots are back in and then there are two different ways I can kit up now um, I can either put the labels all on in the order they came which means they're in DMC number order or I can do them in the order of the symbols there's pluses and minuses to both so putting them in the order of the symbols makes it a lot easier when you're working on the painting. So if you're looking for an A, it's a lot easier if the A is at the beginning of the alphabet and not halfway through. However, when you're de-kitting a project, it's quite often easier for them to be in DMC number. So you do what works for you. Um, I keep varying it up. So I think for this one, I'm going to do it in the order that they've done it. So I'm actually doing a number two first, but I'm doing it in DMC number order. Then I'm doing a C, but you can completely choose how, how you do it and what works for you. This is just to vary it up really for my videos more than anything. It will make the de-kitting different to what some of the others have been because when it comes to de-kitting, it is definitely easier for me if they're in DMC number order. 
but you do work on the painting for longer than your de-kitting so it does also make sense to put them in order of symbols for the purpose of working on the painting because of course you do that for a lot longer than you would be putting the diamonds away but in the interests of entertainment I'm varying it up and it's not that many numbers for me to search through when I am actually doing the painting there's only 17 in this one so if it was the full 28 or 30 I could have a different opinion but for the purposes of this at the moment I don't mind so I'm going to get all my label stickers on I say I've already checked the inventory sheet I don't have more than four packets for any colour which means I know they will all fit in without me needing or potentially wanting to put any next to it. So if this one had say six packets, I would potentially put four in here, put the other two in here, and I just wouldn't label that one because I knew it would be a continuation. Um, that's the reason I check. But in this case, it doesn't make any difference because we have no more than four packets. So, that's the last one on there. So that's them all labelled up. And if I pop that back in, you see when it's shut, I can turn it over and I know what it is that I've got. Now, again, there's not many colours in this. So I am just going to do this in order. And that does not look like 225. 225 is a pink. I'm sure it's a pink. Or is it me? Oh no, it's classed as a very light shell pink. I actually haven't got it in squares, would you believe? But it goes after that one. Uh, I thought it was a different colour to that, but we'll see what it looks like when the painting's done. And it's actually one that will fill that I don't have, so... Maybe I don't know after all. Okay, then we've got 646, which is a green, if I remember rightly. There we go. So that one is sort of a, a khaki green. We only have one of those. 823, which is a blue. So this is the packet I have four of. So I do like to fold these over and cut two at the same time. That's just pure speed otherwise you can spend your life opening packets even if in some instances I make a mess and then sometimes when I'm doing the third and the fourth I will cut them separately because I know it's going to fill the pot and sometimes I just go to make a mess and take them all in anyway or well, in this case I don't cut one enough And I end up doing them separately anyway. It can be handy if you work on a tray when it comes to this. So if you drop them, you can tip them in. Uh, and it would probably make perfect sense for me to do that. So I do have a big tray here. This is bigger than the ones you can often get in kits. So it is a lot bigger. Um, but it fits all my storage on, so. Okay, so 844, I've got three. So we'll do two together and then we'll just pop the last one in. Uh, in fact, we won't, because again, I've not cut it short enough. So sometimes you save time doing it this way and sometimes you don't. It is easier to tip them in one packet at a time. There's no doubt about that but sometimes when you've got so many packets you just want to get them done okay so that's one row then we've got 931 I 
don't think I've cut one of those packets enough either. Oh no, I did. Well, that surprised me. Okay, so that's 931, and that piece that actually fell out is actually half a drill, so that works. Then we've got 934. So there's quite a lot of these colours that we do only end up with one of, um, and that is because it's such a small painting. Normally I work on bigger paintings, but I'm sort of trying to show that small paintings can work in some instances and in some designs. Um, and this is one of those medium designs. So it's a design that if you did it bigger, you would be able to see more detail and it would probably look better. See, look, the tray comes in handy. Um, and it would probably look a lot better, but it can still look okay in a smaller one. 3041. And there are many people that don't have the space for bigger ones or want to be able to afford more designs in a smaller size. So I thought it would be a good experiment. But kitting these up and de-kitting them actually doesn't really take that long at all because they're so small. So sometimes it's just nice for a change as well to work on a small one. What I've been doing with these small ones is I've actually been working on them in between a big round painting that I've got. So I do a certain size section on my big one and then I spend a day or two doing the small one. So the small one only takes me one or two evenings depending on how much time I have that evening. Um, doesn't take me too long and then I go back to doing my big one and then I do some more small one. So it normally works out, it's quite a big section I do on, on my large one, though it is a round, so it is quicker to do than a square. So I tend to find it, it's probably two to three evenings on my big one, and then one to two evenings doing a small one. You know, and sometimes there will be an evening time when I do both, depending on where I'm up to um, and yeah it's a nice balance it stops me I don't want to get bored of the big one I don't want to finish it and think oh that took forever um, so it's nice to sort of break them up with in turn what is a really small painting but it's quite fun to do and it's nice to vary it up between square and round as well because I do like working on both. I find there are benefits to both um, and I enjoy working on them both. So I get the best of both worlds. And at the moment, it means that you get a load of kitten up videos and dekitting videos because rather than me just working on the big one, and not being able to get anything else done, I'm getting two lots done. Okay, so this 3865 is actually sort of um, at an angle. It's like it's gone through the machine at a weird angle. It's not a straight square or rectangle, should I say. Um, so I am gonna cut them both separately rather than try and fight with the angles. And there we go. So look, I did good. I used a tray underneath. Took me a while, but I did. Um, but yeah, that is that one all kitted up. It's quite small and compact, so it still fits in in my little storage tub I use, um, even while I'm still working on the big one. I've got my canvas prepped into five sections. So I, I tend to do one or two of these an evening. It tends to be a couple of these in an evening occasionally I will get a bit more done I say it does depend on when I start um, so this has got some small 
small sections as well so say to probably take you a couple of evenings to get that done um maybe a bit longer if i've been busy but yeah that's another one kitted up i hope you've enjoyed the kitting up process um, I know I'm using a lot of these small boxes at the moment, but they work great for the small diamond paintings and they are cheap. Um, I have used these for big ones as well and just not opened as many packets, but it's completely up to you what works for you. I like these if you don't have much space to store your work, um, but I love the ones that come with the pots if you do. So with some of my bigger paintings, I definitely like using these. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.